Oriel College from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, en.wikipedia dot o-r-g. Oriel College, located in Oriel Square, Oxford, is the fifth oldest of the constituent colleges of the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. Oriel has the distinction of being the oldest royal foundation in Oxford, a title formerly claimed by the University College, whose claim of being founded by King Alfred is no longer promoted. In recognition of this royal connection, the college has also been known as King's College and King's Hall. The original medieval foundation set up by Adam de Braum under the patronage of Edward II was called the House or Hall of the Blessed Mary at Oxford. The first design allowed for a provost and ten fellows called scholars, and the college remained a small body of graduate fellows until the 16th century, when it started to admit undergraduates. During the English Civil War, Oriel played host to high-ranking members of the King's Oxford Parliament. The main site of the college incorporates four medieval halls, Badal Hall, St. Mary Hall, St. Martin Hall, and Tackley's Inn, the last being the earliest property acquired by the college and the oldest standing medieval hall in Oxford. The college has nearly 40 fellows, about 300 undergraduates, and some 160 graduates the student body having roughly equal numbers of men and women. Oriel's notable alumni include two Nobel laureates. Prominent fellows have included John Keeble and John Henry Newman, founders of the Oxford movement. Among Oriel's more notable possessions are a painting by Bernard van Orley and three pieces of medieval silver plate. As of 2003, the college's estimated financial endowment is £63.5 million. Pounds. Section 1. History. Part 1. Middle Ages. On the 24th of April, 1324, the rector of the University Church, Adam de Braun, obtained a license from Edward II to found a, quote, certain college of scholars studying various disciplines in honor of the Virgin, end quote, and to endow to it the value of thirty pounds a year. De Braum bought two properties in 1324, Tackley's Hall on the south side of the High Street, and Perilous Hall on the north side of Broad Street, and as an investment he purchased the Avowson of a church in Aberford. De Braum's foundation was confirmed in a charter of the 21st of January, 1326, in which the crown, represented by the Lord Chancellor, was to exercise the rights of visitors. A further charter, drawn up in May of that year, gave the rights of visitor to Henry Burgage, Bishop of Lincoln, Oxford at that time being part of the Diocese of Lincoln. Under Edward's patronage, de Braum diverted the revenues of the University Church into his college, which thereafter was responsible for appointing the vicar and providing four chaplains to celebrate the daily services in the church. The college lost no time in seeking royal favor again at Edward II's deposition and Edward III confirmed his father's favor in February 1327, but the amended statutes remained in force, with the Bishop of Lincoln as visitor. In 1329, the college received, through royal grant, a large house, known as Le Oriola, standing on the site of what is now First Quad. It is from this property that the college acquired its common name, Oriel, the name being in use from about 1349. The word referred to an oratoriolum, or oriel window, forming a feature of the earlier property. In the early 1410s, several fellows of Oriel took part in the disturbances accompanying Archbishop Arundel's attempt to stamp out Lollardy in the university. The Lollard belief that religious power and authority came through piety and not through the hierarchy of the church, particularly inflamed passions in Oxford where its proponent, John Wycliffe, had been head of Balliol. Disregarding the provost's authority, Oriel Fellows fought bloody battles with other scholars, killed one of the Chancellor's servants when they attacked his house, and were prominent among the group that obstructed the Archbishop and ridiculed his censures. In 1442, 
Henry the Sixth sanctioned an arrangement whereby the town was to pay the college twenty-five pounds a year from the fee farm in exchange for decayed property allegedly worth thirty pounds a year, which the college could not afford to keep in repair. The arrangement was cancelled in 1450. Part 2. Early Modern In 1643, a general obligation was imposed on Oxford colleges to support the royalist cause in the English Civil War. The king called for Oriel's plate, and almost all of it was given, the total weighing twenty-nine pounds five deadweight of gilt, and fifty-two pounds seven ounces fourteen deadweight of white plate. In the same year, the college was assessed at one pound for the weekly sum of forty pounds charged on the colleges and halls for the fortification of the city. When the Oxford Parliament was assembled during the Civil War in 1644, Oriel housed the executive committee of the Privy Council, Parliament being held at neighboring Christ Church. Following the defeat of the Royalist cause, the university was scrutinized by the parliamentarians. Five of the eighteen Oriel Fellows were removed. The visitors, using their own authority, elected Fellows between 1648 and October 1652, when Without reference to the commissioners, John Washburn was chosen. The autonomy of the college in this respect seems to have been restored. In 1673, James Devenant, a fellow since 1661, complained to William Fuller, then Bishop of Lincoln, about Provost Say's conduct in the election of Thomas Twitty to a fellowship. Bishop Fuller appointed a commission that included the Vice-Chancellor, Peter Muse, the Dean of Just Christ, John Fell, and the principal of Brasnos, Thomas Yates. On August 1st, Fell reported to the bishop that, quote, When this devil of buying and selling is once cast out, your lordship will, I hope, take care that he return not again, lest he bring seven worse than himself into the house after it is swept and garnished. End quote. On the 24th of January, 1674, Bishop Fuller issued a decree dealing with the recommendations of the commissioners. A majority of all the fellows should always be insisted on, so the provost could not push an election in a thin meeting, and fellows should be admitted immediately after their election. On January 28th, Provost Say obtained a recommendation for Twitty's election from the king, but it was withdrawn on February 13th following the vice-chancellor's refusal to swear Twitty into the university and the bishop's protests at court. During the early 1720s, a constitutional struggle began between the provost and the fellows, culminating in a lawsuit. In 1721, Henry Edmonds was elected as a fellow by nine votes to three. His election was rejected by Provost George Carter, and on appeal by the visitor Edmund Gibson, then Bishop of Lincoln, rejections of candidates by the provost continued, fueling discontent among the fellows until a writ of attachment against the Bishop of Lincoln was heard between 1724 and 1726. The opposing fellows, led by Edmonds, appealed to the first set of statutes, claiming the crown as visitor, making Gibson's decisions invalid. Provost Carter, supported by Bishop Gibson, appealed to the second set, claiming the Bishop of Lincoln as visitor. The jury decided for the fellows, supporting the original charter of Edward II. In a private printing of 1899, Provost Shadwell lists thirteen gaudies observed by the college during the 18th century. By the end of the 19th century, all but two, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and the Purification of the Virgin, had ceased to be celebrated. Part 3. Modern In the early 19th century, the reforming zeal of Provosts John Evelay and Edward Copleston gained Oriel the reputation of being the most brilliant college of the day and the center of the Oxford Noetics. Clerical liberals such as Richard Whateley and Thomas Arnold were fellows, and during the 1830s, two intellectually eminent fellows of Oriel, John Keeble and John Henry Newman, supported by Canon Pusey of Christ Church and others, formed a group known as the Oxford Movement, alternatively as the Tractarians, or familiarly as the Puseyites. The group were disgusted by the indolence prevailing in the church, and they sought to revive the spirit of early Christianity. 
This caused tension in college, as Provost Edward Hawkins was a determined opponent of the movement. During World War I, a wall was built, dividing third quad from second quad, to accommodate students of Somerville College, while their college was being used as a military hospital. At this time, Oxford separated male and female students as far as possible. Vera Bertain, one of the Somerville students, recalled an amusing occurrence during her time there in her autobiography, Testament of Youth. Quote, the few remaining undergraduates in the still masculine section of Oriel not unnaturally concluded that it would be a first-rate rag to break down the wall which divided them from the carefully guarded young females in St. Mary's Hall. Great perturbation filled the souls of the Somerville Dons when they came down to breakfast one morning to find that a large gap had suddenly appeared in the protecting masonry, through which had been thrust a hilarious placard. Who made this ear old? Mice! Throughout that day and the following night, the senior common room from the principal downwards took it in turns to sit on guard beside the hole, for fear that any unruly spirit should escape through it to the forbidden adventurous males on the other side. End quote. In 1985, the college became the last all-male college in Oxford to admit women for matriculation as undergraduates. In 1984, the senior common room voted 23 to 4 to admit women undergraduates from 1986. The junior common room president believed that, quote, the distinctive character of the college will be undermined, end quote. Section 2. Buildings and Environs. Part 1. First Quadrangle. Nothing survives of the original buildings, La Oriola and the smaller St. Martin's Hall in the southeast, both were demolished when the quadrangle was built in the artisan mannerist style during the 17th century. The south and west ranges and the clock tower were built around 1620 to 1622. The north and east ranges and the chapel buildings date from 1637 to 1642. The facade of the east range forms a classical E-shape, comprising the college, chapel, hall, and undercroft. The exterior and interior of the ranges are topped by an alternating pattern of decorative gables. In the center of the East Range, the portico of the hall entrance commemorates its construction during the reign of Charles I with the legend Regnante Carolo, in the reign of Charles, in pierced stonework. The portico was completely built in 1897, and above it are statues of two kings, Edward II on the left, and probably either Charles I or James I, although this is disputed, above those is the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, after whom the college is officially named. The hall has a hammer beam roof. The Louvre in the center is now glazed, but was originally the only means of escape for smoke rising from a fireplace in the center of the floor. The wooden paneling was designed by Ninian Comper and was erected in 1911 in place of some previous 19th century Gothic type, though even earlier paneling, dating from 1710, is evident in the buttery. Behind the high table is a portrait of Edward II. Underneath is a longsword brought to the college in 1902 after being preserved for many years on one of the college's estates at Swainswick near Bath. On either side are portraits of Sir Walter Raleigh and Joseph Butler. The other portraits around the hall include other prominent members of Oriel, such as Cecil Rhodes, Matthew Arnold, Thomas Arnold, James Anthony Frode, John Keeble, John Henry Newman, Richard Waitley, and John Robinson. The heraldic glass in the windows display the coat of arms of benefactors and distinguished members of the college. Three of the windows were designed by Ninian Comper. The window next to the entrance on the east side contains the arms of Regis Professor of Modern History, who have been ex officio fellows of the college. The current chapel is Oriel's third, the first being built around 1373 on the north side of the front quadrangle. By 1566, the chapel was located on the south side of the quadrangle, as shown in a drawing made for Elizabeth I's visit to Oxford in that year. The present building was consecrated in 1642, and despite subsequent restorations, it largely retains its original appearance.
The bronze lectern was given to the college in 1654. The black and white marble paving dates from 1677 to 1678. Except for the pews on the west dating from 1884, the paneling, stalls, and screens are all 17th century, as are the altar and carved communion rails. Behind the altar is Bernard Van Orley's The Carrying of the Cross. A companion piece to this painting is in the National Gallery of Scotland. The organ case dates from 1716, originally designed by Christopher Schrader for St. Mary Abbott's Church, Kensington. It was acquired by Oriel in 1884. In the northwest window of the gallery, there is a small piece of late medieval glass, a figure of St. Margaret of Antioch. In the south window of the gallery, there is a painted window of the presentation of Christ in the temple, executed by William Peckett of York. It was originally set in the east window in 1767. A later version of his work can be seen in New College Chapel. The rest of the stained glass is Victorian. The earliest is on the easternmost part of the south side. The rest date from after the 1884 restorations by Powell. Above the entrance to the chapel is an oriel that until the 1880s was a room on the first floor that formed part of a set of rooms that were occupied by Richard Waitley and later by John Newman. Waitley is said to have used the space as a larder, and Newman is said to have used it for his private prayers. When the organ was installed in 1884, the space was used for the blower. The wall that once separated the room from the antechapel was removed, making it accessible from the chapel. The organ was built by J. W. Walker and Sons in 1988. In 1991, the space behind the organ was rebuilt as an oratory and memorial to Newman and the Oxford movement. A new stained glass window, designed by Vivian Haig and realized by Douglas Hogg, was completed and installed in 2001. During the 1980s, the chapel was extensively restored with the assistance of donations from Lady Norma Dalrymple Champneys. During this work, the chandelier, given in 1885 by Provost Shadwell, while still a fellow, was put back in place. The organ was restored, the painting mounted behind the altar, and the chapel repainted. A list of former chaplains and organ scholars was erected in the antechapel. Part 2. Second Quadrangle. Originally a garden, the demand for more accommodation for undergraduates in the early 18th century resulted in two freestanding blocks being built. The first block erected was the Robinson Building on the east side, built in 1720 by Bishop Robinson at the suggestion of his wife, as the inscription over the door records. Its twin block, the Carter Building, was erected on the west side in 1729 as a result of a benefaction by Provost Carter. The two buildings stood for nearly a hundred years as detached blocks in the garden, and the architectural elements of the first quad are repeated on them. Only here, the seven gables are all alike. In the early nineteenth century, they were joined up to the front quad with their present rather incongruous connecting links. In the link to the Robinson Building, two purpose-built rooms have been incorporated. The Champneys Room, designed by Weldon Champneys, the nephew of Basil Champneys, and the Benefactor's Room, a paneled room honoring benefactors of the college. The North Range houses the library and senior common rooms, designed in the neoclassical style by James Wyatt. It was built between 1788 and 1796 to accommodate the books bequested by Edward Baron Lee formerly high steward of the university and an Orielnesis, whose gift had doubled the size of the library. The two-story building had rusticated arches on the ground floor and a row of ionic columns above, dividing the facade into seven bays. The ground floor contains the senior common rooms and above is the library. On the 7th of March, 1949, a fire spread from the library roof over 300 printed books and the manuscripts on exhibition were completely destroyed. Over 3,000 books needed repair, though the main structure suffered little damage and restoration took less than a year. Part 3. St. Mary Hall, 3rd Quadrangle The south, east, and west ranges of 3rd Quadrangle contain elements of St. Mary's Hall, which was incorporated into Oriel in 1902. 
Less than a decade later, the hall's buildings on the northern side were demolished for the construction of the Rhodes Building. Badal Hall in the south was formally amalgamated with St. Mary's Hall in 1505. In the south range, parts of the medieval buildings survive and are incorporated into Staircase 10. The straight, steep flight of stairs and timber-framed partitions date from a mid-15th century rebuilding of St. Mary Hall. The former chapel, hall, and buttery of St. Mary Hall, built in 1640, form part of the junior library and junior common room. Viewed from the third quad, the chapel, with its Gothic windows, can be seen to have been built neatly on top of the hall, a unique example in Oxford of such a plan. On the east side of the quad is a simple, rustic-style timber frame building, known as the Doll's House. It was erected by Principal King in 1743. In 1826, an ornate range was erected in the Gothic Revival style, incorporating the old gate of St. Mary's Hall on the west side of the quad. The large projecting window on the first floor at the north end was once the drawing room of the principal of Hall. Parts of the street wall incorporated into this range show traces of blocked windows dating from the same period of rebuilding in the 15th century as Staircase 10. The Rhodes Building, pictured, was built in 1911 using money left to the college by former student Cecil Rhodes. It was designed by Basil Champneys and stands on the site of the principal's house on the high street. Champneys' first proposal for the building included an open arcade to the high street, a domed central feature, and a balustraded parapet. The left-hand block and much of the center was to be given up to a new provost's lodging, and the five windows on the first floor above the arcade were to light a gallery belonging to the lodging. The college eventually decided to retain the existing provost's lodging and demanded detailing more in accordance with the style which has become traditional in Oxford. It became the last building of the Jacobean revival style in Oxford. On the side facing the high street, there is a statue of Rhodes over the main entrance, with Edward the Seventh and George V beneath. The inscription acknowledges Rhodes' munificence and is a chronogram giving the date of construction. The building was not entirely well received. William Sherwood, mayor of Oxford and master of Magdalen College School, wrote, quote, Uriel is broken out into the high, destroying a most picturesque group of old houses in so doing, and, to put it gently, hardly compensating us for their removal. End quote. Part 4. Island Site, O'Brien Quadrangle. A convex quadrilateral of buildings, bordered by the High Street and the meeting of Oriel Street and King Edward Street in Oriel Square. The site took 600 years to acquire, and although it contains teaching rooms and the Harris Lecture Theatre, it is largely given over to accommodation. On the High Street, numbers 106 and 107 stand on the site of Tackley's Inn, built around 1295. It was the first piece of property that Adam de Brom acquired when he began to found the college in 1324. It comprised a hall and chambers leased to scholars behind a frontage of five shops, with the scholars above and a cellar of five bays below. The hall, which was open to the roof, was 33 feet 10 meters long, 20 feet 6 meters wide, and about 22 feet or 7 meters high. At the east end was a large chamber with another chamber above it. The south wall of the building, which survives, was partly of stone and contains a large, too light early 14th century window. The cellar below is of the same date and is the best preserved medieval cellar in Oxford. Originally entered by stone steps from the street, it has a stone vault divided into four sections by two diagonal ribs with carved corbels. The Oriel Street site was acquired between 1329 and 1392. Number 12, now staircases 19 and 20, is the oldest tenement acquired by the college, known as Killingsworth's. It was granted to the college in 1392 by Thomas de Lentwarden, fellow and later provost, having previously been let to William de Daventre, Oriel's fourth provost, in 1367. A back wing to the property was added around 1600, and further work to the front was conducted in 1724-38. to 38. 
In 1985, funded by a gift from Edgar O'Brien and £10,000 from the Pilgrim Trust, Killingsworth was refurbished, along with numbers 10, 9, and 7. King Edward Street was created by the college between 1872 and 1873, when 109 and 110 High Street were demolished. The old shops on each side of the road were pulled down and rebuilt, and to preserve the continuity, the new shops were numbered 108 and 109 through 112. Named after the college's founder, the road was opened in 1873. On the wall of the first floor of number 6, there is a large metal plaque with a portrait of Cecil Rhodes. Underneath is this inscription, quote, in this house, the retired Honorable Cecil John Rhodes kept academical residence in the year 1881. This memorial is erected by Alfred Mosley in recognition of the great services rendered by Cecil Rhodes to his country. End quote. In the center of the quad is the Harris Building, formerly Oriel Court, a real tennis court where Charles I played tennis with his nephew, Prince Rupert, in December 1642, and King Edward VII had his first tennis lesson in 1859. The building was in use as a lecture hall by 1923, and after modernization between 1991 and 1994, funded by Sir Philip and Lady Harris, contains accommodation, a seminar room, and the college's main lecture theater. The bronze plaque in the lobby commemorates Sir Philip's father, Captain Charles William Harris, after whom the building is named. The building was opened by John Major, then Prime Minister, on August 10, 1993. Part 5. Rectory Road Bordered by the Cowley Road, this site was formerly Nazareth House, a residential care home convent. Goldie Wing, Lerminer House, and neighboring cottages on Rectory Road are its surviving buildings. Nazareth House itself was demolished to make room for two purpose-built halls of residence, James Mellon Hall and David Patterson House. The two new halls were opened by Queen Elizabeth II on the 8th of November, 2000. As it is about ten minutes' walk from college and more peaceful than the middle of the city, it has become the principal choice of accommodation for Oriel's graduates and finalists. The site has its own common rooms, squash court, gymnasium, and support staff. Part 6. Bartlemoss Bartlemoss is a conservation area that incorporates the remaining buildings of a leper hospital founded by Henry I. It includes the sports grounds for Oriel, Jesus and Lincoln colleges, along with landscaping for wildlife and small-scale urban development. In 1326, Provost Adam de Brom was appointed warden of St. Bartholomew's, a leper hospital in Cowley Marsh. The hospital was later granted to the college by Edward III, along with the payments it had been receiving from the fee farm. It was increasingly used as a rest house for sick members of the college needing a change of air. In 1649, the college rebuilt the main hospital range north of the chapel, destroyed in the Civil War, as a row of four almshouses called Bartlemas House. Bartlemas Chapel and two farm cottages are the other extant buildings. Section 3. The Coat of Arms. The arms of the college are based on those of the founder Edward II, the three gold lions of England on a red background. However, as no one may bear another's arms unaltered, an engrailed silver border was added for difference. The three feathers, often adopted by members of the college, can be found in decorations around college and is the motif in the college crested tie. It probably represents Edward, the Black Prince, although it may represent King Charles I, who was Prince of Wales when the building of First Quad began in the 17th century. College colors, used on the college scarf, sports clothing, oar blades, and the like, are two white stripes on navy. Section 4. Grace. Before formal hall each evening, the following grace is recited by one of the student Bible clerks. This translation is reputedly by Erasmus in his Convigium Religiosum of a grace recorded by St. Christiolum. It translates, Blessed God, 
who feeds us from our youth and provides food for all flesh, fill our hearts with joy and gladness that we, having enough to satisfy us, may abound in every good work, though Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor, praise, and power for all ages. After the meal, the provost or a fellow usually recites a short Latin prayer instead of the full post kibum grace, which translates, Lord God, the resurrection and life of all who believe in thee, who art always worthy to be praised by both the living and the dead, we give thee thanks for Edward the Second, our founder, for Adam de Brom, our principal benefactor, and for all our other benefactors, by whose benefits we are here maintained in godliness and learning. And we beseech thee that using these thy gifts rightly, we may be led to the immortal glory of resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Section 5. Student Life Accommodation is provided for all undergraduates and for some graduates. Though some accommodation is off-site, members are generally expected to dine in hall, where there are two sittings every evening, one informal and one formal, except on Saturdays, where there is only an informal sitting. The bar, situated underneath the hall, serves food from mid-morning and drinks in the evening. Its LCD TV was installed prior to the 2006 Football World Cup. There is both a junior common room between second and third quad and a middle common room on the island site. The college lending library supplements the university libraries with over 100,000 volumes. It is one of the largest college libraries in the university and will purchase books needed for the course. Most undergraduate tutorials are carried out in the college, though for other specialist papers, undergraduates may be sent to tutors in other colleges. Since 2001, Oriel College students have chosen not to be affiliated to the university-wide Students' Union, although this has not stopped some students from getting involved with OUSU and running for elected office. Oriel has a reputation for its success in rowing, in particular the two intercollegiate bumps races, Torpids and Eights Week. In 2005, they remained head of the river in Torpids and rowed over second in Eights Week. In 2006, Oriel claimed the first ever double headship in Torpids, rowing over as head of the river in both of the men's and women's first divisions. However, in summer eights, the men's first eight were awarded spoons after being bumped every day. On the afternoons of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the seventh week in Trinity term, the boat club hosts the annual Oriel Regatta. Events in this competition include side-by-side -side racing for eights, coxed fours, pairs, and single skulls. The course runs upstream from the Long Bridges Boathouse to past the end of boathouses on Christchurch Island and are conducted in knockout format. Croquet may be played in St. Mary Quad in the summer, as can bowls on the south lawn of First Quad. The sports ground is mainly used for cricket, tennis, rugby, and football. Rowing is carried out from the boathouse across Christchurch Meadow. Section 6. People Associated with the College Many notable and famous people have passed through Oriel's gates. From statesmen to cricketers to industrialists, their most famous undergraduate is the 16th century explorer, Sir Walter Raleigh. The college has produced many churchmen, bishops, cardinals, governors, and two Nobel Prize recipients, Alexander Todd for chemistry and James Mead for economics. The professorial fellowships the college holds are the Regis Professor of Modern History, held by Robert Evans and formerly by Sir John Eliot and Thomas Arnold, the Oriel Professor of the Interpretation of Holy Scripture, held by John Barton, the Nawath Professor of the Philosophy of the Christian Religion, and the Nuffeld Professor of Obstetrics at Gynecology. Section 7. Silver Plate Oriel has three notable pieces of medieval plate. The first is a French beaker and cover in silver gilt. Past estimates on its dating from 1460 to 1470 are thought mistaken, and circa 1350, with later decoration, was later expounded. It was bought in 1493 for about four pounds, under the mistaken belief that it had belonged to Edward II. In a college inventory of plate, 
dated 21st of December 1596, it is named as the Founder's Cup. The second notable piece of plate is a mazer of maple wood with silver gilt mounts, dating from 1470 to 1485. On the edge of the rim is a row of grouped beads. Below is an inscription in black letters that translates, Man in thy drafts, let reason be thy guide, and not the craving of perverted lust. So honest nourishment will be supplied, and strife of tongue be trampled in the dust. This type of shallow drinking vessel was quite common in the Middle Ages, but the only other mazers in Oxford are three dating from 15th century and one standing mazer from 1529 to 30, all belonging to all souls. Thirdly is a coconut cup, one of six in Oxford. The Oriel cup has silver gilt mounts and dates from the first quarter of the 16th century. Among the latter plate are two flagons, two patens, and a chalice, which date from 1640 to 41. The larger pieces of buttery plate include the Sanford and Hayward Grace Cups, dated 1654 to 55 and 1669 to 70. A rosewater ewer, gifted in 1669, a punch bowl, dating from 1735 to 36, and the Great Wenman Tanker, presented in 1679, which holds a gallon and is the largest in Oxford. Many of the 17th and 18th century tankards were given by common sales and commoners as a form of admission fee. Section 8. Film and Fiction The buildings of Oriel College were used as a location for Hugh Grant's first film, Privileged, from 1982, Oxford Blues, 1984, True Blue, 1991, and The Dinosaur Hunter in 2000. The television crime series Inspector Morse used the college in the episodes Ghost in the Machine under the name of Courtney College, The Silent World of Nicholas Quinn, The Infernal Serpent, Deadly Slumber, Twilight of the Gods, and Death is Now My Neighbor. And in one off-follow-on, Lewis, the middle common room, and Oriel Square were used. The quads and interiors were used in a 2006 documentary on Gilbert White by Michael Wood, both being formal students of the college. In Tom Brown at Oxford by Thomas Hughes, Oriel's wins the 1842 Head of the River Race, with Oriel bumping Trinity, was rewritten as Tom's College, St. Ambrose taking first place and Oriel in second place. For more information about Section 6, see the list of Oriel College people, also former students of Oriel College and fellows of Oriel College. For other related information, see Oriel Square, Oxford, University of Oxford, University College, Adam de Brom, Edward II, the English Civil War, and Oxford Movement. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.